ข้าจริงจังใครสิใครน้องไรก็ใช่เอ๊ะกูสุดเอ๊ะไม่สมมุติเจอกับแล้วก็สุดกายแล้วมั้งแล้วก็ใครดีเอ๊ะโอเคมันดีเวอร์ทแต่สุดท้ายทำไมอืมนี่เคยปามันชื่อข้างดิวเรียนชื่อมาค่ะจริงโอเคค่ะจริงเอ๊ะถ้าซื้อตรงตรงน่าสมบูรณ์ป่ะมันปุ้งน่าสไตล์ชงชื่อใครสูงชื่อใครสูงโอ้ฮัลโหลฮัลโหล everyone can you hear me okay so this is actually my first time to to do this YouTube live so I hope everything is going to be smooth okay so so today's class we are actually doing a very quick summary of what we expect you to learn for this week so this is our our style okay so as you have seen in the announcement. So we will always make this Wednesday class a class summary of what we want you to study. So we expect you to uh, to check the OCW recording of my past years uh, during Monday and Tuesday at your own pace, so that you know what we are going to talk about. And then for every Monday class, we will spend one hour to do some exercises together with you. So, so, and then the other hour, perhaps, uh, we will just skip it. So, so let's begin with uh, the what we are going to talk about to, uh, today. So first, it is an overview of this course. So we have a web page uh, of the previous years, uh, so that you can you can check the lecture notes there. So to access the web page is easy. Find my. Name and then find my department webpage and then search for discrete maths. So so we will meet. So here this this is. So for the lecture time, yeah. So this was, the for the regular cases. But then what we are going to do now is changed. So this is the tutor. Uh, this is the class summary, and then the Monday class will be a tutorial. And then uh, we have. Uh, recruited already the TA, but then I will finalize it as soon as possible so that you can all know what are what are they and then how to ask them questions. So we are not going to use IRMS this year. We are switching to something called E Class. So so this is easy. Okay. Now in the in the overview lecture uh, from the OCW, we have talked about the the the. The what is meant by discrete math? So it, it is the study of discrete objects. So we have given some examples. So for instance, is it possible to find a bunch of consecutive numbers that they are not all primes? So they are not primes at all, all of them. So this is one thing that we study in discrete math because we are talking about numbers. So each number you can count it one by one. So it is kind of discrete. Rather than the opposite continuous, okay. So we have also talked about a problem called sorting. Sorting is a very important pro problem in computer science. So we have a set of numbers, so like ten, five, two, three, seven, something like this, and then we want to arrange them, arrange all these numbers from small to large. So this is easy for human. Yeah, if the number of Things that we want to arrange is is small, but on the other hand, if we are having let's say one million different numbers that we want to arrange them, then this become this will become a very difficult problem. So we can ask our computer to help, but in that case, we will need to design a correct method to to do so. So the design of this method 
So we will need to give instructions one by one. Then this is also something that is discrete. So for this, we will need to give out correct instructions. We will also argue that our method is correct. So we will also need to prove the correctness. And finally, we will also want to show that our method is fast so that it won't take forever to run. So in that case, we will also need to analyze the performance. So all these things will fall into the topic of discrete mathematics. So the method that we are so using to solve a problem is something that we call an algorithm. Okay. Another thing, another example that we have talked about is called the shortest path problem. So this is something that we would do every day when we are using a Google map. So we have some roads, we have some cities, and then or some locations, and then roads have different lengths. So we want to ask, what is the best way that we will we can travel from one place to to the other? So for instance, so if we start at our school, what is the shortest way, shortest route that we can do to go to the big city? So this is one 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 problem that we want to study. So this is also about something that is discrete. And then another thing is, so we have a map coloring. So so let's imagine that this is a world map. So we have some kind of countries. So country and country between them, there may be boundaries. And then what we want to do here is to to give a color for each country so that the neighboring countries will always receive different colors. So, so for this problem, people will ask, what is the minimum number of colors that we need to color a particular map? Okay, so so in in so so at at the moment, people will believe that for any map, any world map that we can create, then it can be colored using only four colors. So how do we show that this is always true? Okay, so in this course, so we will also talk about this, but instead of showing that four colors is always enough, we will make a slightly uh, weaker argument. We will just show that uh, we can always use five colors to, to color a map because the proof of four color is very long and then it requires computer to do the checking, but then the proof for using five colors only, it is rather easy so we can all understand in this course. Again, this is about something that is discrete. Yeah, because we have countries, so you can count the countries one by one. We're using colors, one, two, three, four, five, five colors. So everything here is discrete. So another kind of problem that we want to look at, for instance, is this case. So we have a certain, so we call this a graph. So a graph has some vertices. So these are the points here. So imagine that they represent cities. And then we have, something called edges that links the vertices together. So these are the rows. So here, one kind of problem that we want to study is something that we call the Euler tour problem. So we want to ask, is it possible to start at a certain location so that we can walk all the rows exactly once so that we can go back to the original starting location? Uh, yeah. Can, can we do so? So each road, we can only walk once, and then we want to do, so so we, so we a, a particular location can be uh, walked through again and again, but the rows we are going to use is only once. So can we do so? So this is a problem that we will study in this class. So again, you can see it, you can quickly see that this is also something that is discrete. Okay, so roughly, these are the topics that we want to talk about uh, in this class, so you don't need to know all the names at this moment. But then, but then the first topic that we will talk about is called logic. Okay, so this is what we will touch it briefly today. Okay, so for this course, we have a textbook. So this is called Discrete Mathematics and Its Application. It is by Kenneth Rawson. So currently, it is, I think, it is already the eighth edition but then uh, 
it doesn't matter which edition that you are using. So because the eighth edition is of course is the best because it has corrected a number of uh, typing mistakes or errors uh, in the previous edition. But then yeah, but then the content, the main content of the various editions, they are similar. So you can you can if you have any access to any one of them, that that will be fine. Okay, the textbook is actually um, so we will follow closely to to the textbook when we talk about a certain topic. But it is really not necessary to buy a textbook. So this textbook is nice. So what I would recommend you is you go to the library or you go to the web to get a soft copy or whatever. Take a look, and then if you really want. And uh, to to if you really love it, then then you can buy it. But on the other hand, we have lecture notes provided, and then we will select some of the interesting examples, good exercises from the textbook. So in that case, if you are with us together, then then you will have no problems in understanding everything uh, that we want to teach. So this is really optional. But for me, so I will have one here because this is a textbook that I've used since. My university years, so twenty years ago, or more than twenty years ago, so, 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 so that's why I would have it. But then it is really up to you to decide whether you want to buy it. And then there are also two nice references. One is the discrete math, a、uh, discrete and combinatorial mathematics. So we we have actually two different lecturers for this course,、uh, this year. So. This is the textbook used in the other class, so another another good one, and then we have a textbook.、Uh, so this is called Elements of Discrete Mathematics. This is an old one, used like forty or fifty years ago, written by our previous headmaster, Professor Liu Chonglang. Okay, David Liu Chonglang. So he just passed away、uh, recently,、uh, or maybe around one year ago. But then. His his textbook is really uh something that I would call it pioneering. So this is the first one that has a good discussion of the discrete math topic, and it was actually used by MIT or a lot of famous、uh, American schools uh, uh, at that time. Okay, so so if you have a chance, yeah, take a look,、uh, borrow this from the library. So it has many many challenging problems there. Okay, so for the assessment, so I I believe that I have sent you already. So it is the same as in the course description, or in the announcement. So we have two formulas. This is the basic formula. Okay, so the basic formula, or I call it formula one, here means that uh, so we will have three exams all together, and then some assignments. So assignments doesn't count. So. You can do it and then ask us、uh, to 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 mark it, but then, but then these are for training, so we don't count any points there. So there are three exams, so two of them, the best two of them. Each one will contribute forty percent of your total mark, and then the remaining one will contribute twenty percent of your total mark. So so this is one formula. And then for the other formula, you can check it. So for the other formula, it is like a, it is like we will have twenty percent given to you for free, and then we will get the average of the, of the three exams, so that they will contribute to the remaining eighty percent of your mark. Okay. So formula two, is like the case that since we don't give you assignments, so we will as assume that in the normal case you will do assignment perfectly. So we will give you twenty percent marks for doing all the assignments perfectly, and then for the exams we will use the traditional way so that we take the average and then, and then and then this will contribute to your remaining、uh, percentage. So formula one is usually suitable for 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 students who are performing very good, and then for for formula two. Then it will be the case that、uh, for students who are marginally passing, then it will be helping you to raise your、uh, points a little bit so that you can change your status from passing、uh, from not passing to passing. And then we have、uh, these are the three、uh, tentative weeks for the exams. So we will have our exams on week eight, week 
probably 13, not instead of 14. So there was a table here, 8, 13, and 18. So this is our, our, our way. And then the study tips. Okay, so if possible, come to every class or you, you take your own pace to, to, to check the OCW recording, but then come to every class summary here so to make sure that you you have a quick understanding, a quick summary of what you, you check, you use it to check whether you, you have understood already all the things that we want you to know for that week. And then, yeah, please ask questions. So I'm sorry that we are doing this kind of online presentation, online meeting here, so that we cannot have a very direct uh, communication uh, uh, like before. But then, yeah, please ask us questions. We have uh, provided uh, some Google form for you to fill in. So if you have any questions, you can ask us. We will collect them, and then and then and then we will address them. Like uh, so, we will collect the 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 questions that you have asked until uh, a Saturday, and then immediately on the Monday, uh, we will address your 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 questions. Okay. Uh, inside the tutorial class and then do every assignment and then here because assignment doesn't count to any points then you can really discuss fully with your with your friends with your classmates about the assignments and then helping the others is the best way to learn uh, yeah because you can you can check you if you can teach a certain person then that means that you have fully understood all the things that you want to teach. Okay, so help the others is the best way to to learn. Okay, and then yeah, we have all the uh, notes. We have all the OCW recordings uh, there, so you can always study ahead. And then yeah, most importantly, uh, I hope you liked uh, the course and then have fun here. So from time to time, we will discuss logical puzzles or interesting things related to this course. So 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 I hope that you will like it. Okay, so this is a very quick overview about this course. Okay. So let me go to something that we want to talk about today. So this is this one. Okay. Okay, so we would first start with logic. Okay. So so today we will talk about what is meant by proposition and proposition logic. So they are very simple thing, okay? So logic is something that we will use every day to 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 so it is about understanding of what are the things that are correct and what are the things that are wrong, okay? So we begin with this technical term called proposition, but it is very easy. So so what is a proposition? So here, a proposition is a declarative sentence. Oh, so, so let me see. Okay, so first of all, before we talk about proposition, so, so we want to explain this word, declarative. So a declarative sentence is a sentence that declares a fact. Okay, so we can easily see that, okay, this is one plus one is equal to two. It tries to declare that, 1 plus 1, the result will be equal to 2. So it is a declarative sentence. So we don't care whether this sentence is something correct or wrong, but as, soon, as long as it is declaring something, then it is a declarative sentence. And then we have another one, 2 plus 2 is equal to 3, so this is also a declarative sentence. But we know that this is something wrong, but this is still a declarative sentence. And then this one, what time is it? It is not a declarative sentence, it is a question. And then read this carefully. This sentence is not declarative, it is a command. You don't you don't it is not about something you want to tell it is correct or wrong. Okay, so it is a command. Now we all understand declarative sentence. So a proposition is something that a proposition. Okay, so a proposition is a declarative sentence that is either true or false, but not both. Okay, so here, 1 plus 1 equals to 2, it is a proposition. So we see that this is a declarative sentence, and then it is true. So this is a true proposition. And 2 plus 2 is equal to 3, it is also a proposition, and it is just a false proposition. But if you look at it, x plus 1 is equal to 2. So 
Let's say x is a certain kind of a variable that I didn't tell you what it means. But then in that case, x can be changing, right? So sometimes if we fit 1 to x, then it will be true. If we fit, let's say, 2 to x, then it will be false. So at this moment, we do not know whether x plus 1 is, two, is equal to 2 is true or false. Okay, at this particular time, we don't know. So in that case, it is non-proposition. So unless, unless what? Unless the value of x is known, then we can, we, we would be able to tell whether this will become a proposition then. But at this moment, it is not a proposition. Now, how about this? So you will pass in this course, okay. Now, so of course, or at this moment, you don't know whether you will pass in this course or not. But at the end of this semester, then you will either pass this course or not. So if someone is in the future can come back and tell you, then only one thing can happen, unless there is something called the parallel universe. But let's say we don't, okay? So in that case, for this one, it must either be true or false, but it cannot be both, right? So in that case, this is a proposition, though, although we do not know the value at this moment. So this is unlike x plus 1 is equal to 2. So even if there is someone in the future coming back, he still cannot tell you what is, whether this is true or false, because the value of x may not be assigned to any number, even in the future. But for this case, whether you will pass in this course or not, it is going to be known in the future. Okay, so, so this is still, for me, this is still a proposition. So in the tutorial, we will talk about something that is very interesting. We will see, we will talk about something that, if you look at it, it looks like a sentence, it looks like a proposition, but in that case, it is not. So, so, so we will talk about something interesting on Monday next, next week. Ah, by the way, Monday next week is a holiday but we will still hold this YouTube Live. Now, you this YouTube Live, we will have recording, so don't worry if you are really uh, busy that you cannot attend, but if you can, yeah, please uh, join us in the tutorial next Monday as well. Okay, so, so something more now. So proposition is a sentence, right? So, so it is a kind of an object. So, so we can always use a variable so like a nickname to, to, to denote a proposition. So for instance, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So it is something that we need to type or we need to read it out loud a long time. But on the other hand, we may use a symbol, let's say P, to represent the whole sentence. So that later, when, whenever we see P, then we know that we are talking about this sentence. So this is like a nickname, a short notation. So we can, talk, we can use Q like a variable here, to represent a very long sentence here. So this is a long sentence. You get an A in this course. So this is either true or false, right? So, but not both. So you know that, okay, this is a proposition. And then here we are using Q to represent this one. Okay. And then, so recall that the proposition will be either true or false, but not both. So. If a proposition is true, then we will say that its truth value is true. And then we will denote the truth value of a proposition by t. And on the other hand, if a proposition is false, then we will call its truth value to be false. And then we will denote the truth value by f. So if it is a proposition, let's say this is p. p here is a proposition. Okay. So for this given proposition p, it will have a truth value, and then for this case, the truth value for p here is t. Okay, now this is another proposition, and for this proposition, we don't know the truth value, but, but we know that it is either true or false, so the truth value here could be t, or the truth value here could be f, although we don't know at this moment. Okay, now, once we are, so we are now ready to talk about something a little bit more complicated. We want to use some way to create new propositions from some 
original or some old propositions. Okay, so this is something that we call the logical operators. Just like numbers, so let's say I have number like a number one or a number two, so I can create a new number like three by doing operations on one and two. So we can add one to two. One plus two is equal to three. So the plus is an operator that creates a new number from two input numbers. Is that okay? So similarly, we can create a proposition, a new proposition from some other propositions using operators. So the first operator that we talk about is called the negation. Okay, so for instance, we will start with a certain proposition P. So this P we don't know, maybe it represents 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, okay, or it represents this, you get an A in this part. So let's say we have a certain proposition. Let's use P to represent it. Then the negation of P, we will use this symbol. This is like a, it's like a minus sign here. So we will call it not P. The negation of P or not P is a new proposition so that we want this proposition to be having the true value opposite to P. So it corresponds to the, to the sentence or the statement that this negation P or not P, it is reading out, you can also read it as, it is not the case that P happens. So what does that mean? Whenever P is true, the negation of P will be false. On the other hand, whenever P is false, then the negation of P is going to be true. So whenever we are given a certain proposition P, then we can talk about making a new one so that its truth value is always opposite to the original one. Okay, so this is one, one thing that we will introduce. So it is just like you have a number 3, I can add a minus sign before it, to make it negative three. So this is something kind of an opposite number. So understand this is to check our understanding. So we have yeah, we have two propositions here. Okay, so let's see if we can get the negation of each of these propositions. So first one says Simon's PC runs Windows XP. So the negation of this you can all, of course say that it is not the case that Simon's PC runs Windows XP. So this is a, a correct way to say, but it is not simple. Okay, so to make people understand what you want to say about negation, so a common way here will probably says Simon's PC does not run Windows XP. So this is going to be the opposite of this particular proposition. So although we do not know whether Simon's PC is really running Windows XP or not, but whenever this is a true case, then the sentence Simon's PC does not run Windows XP will become false. And on the other hand, if this is false, then the opposite sentence Simon's PC runs uh, does not run Windows XP will become true. Okay, so, so I hope you understand this is a very simple concept. And then the other one is, let's say Chris's PC has at least 32 gigabytes of memory. So the opposite, the negation of this will be Chris's PC does not have at least 32 gigabytes of memory. Or better, Chris's PC has less than or uh, has strictly less than, okay, 32 gigabytes of memory. Okay, so the opposite of at least, at least means greater than or equal to. So the opposite of this one is less than, okay? So less than 32 gigabytes of memory. So this is the first logical operator, negation. Okay, so this is the first one that we introduce. It is just like minus sign. So three minus three is equal to zero. So these two numbers always add up to zero. So they are opposite to each other. Okay, another logical operator is called conjunction. Conjunction. Okay, so conjunction, we will need two input propositions. So we will have, let's say P and Q are representing two different pro two propositions. They could be the same. I don't care, but they are just two propositions. So the conjunction of P with Q, so we use this symbol, this arrow, point arrow hat here. 
it is the proposition P and Q. So what does that mean? Okay, so we will see some daily life example later. So here P and Q means that, okay, so, so if P is something that we talk about it is true, and also Q is something that we talk about is true, then we will say P and Q will be a sentence, this is true. But for all the other cases, then this is regarded as false. So here, this is the explanation. The true value of P and Q is true if both P and Q are true, otherwise it is false. So let's just take a look of daily life example. So let's say, Kai is the lecturer of this course. And then we have another proposition. This course is held on Monday and Friday. Okay, so we have this proposition and then this proposition. Okay, let's consider we do the conjunction of them. So this becomes, okay, Kai is the lecturer of this course and, and also, and also, this course is held on Monday and Friday. Then you will see that, okay, yeah, because this course is not going to be held on Friday at all, so it is not correct here. So the whole thing that we talk about here, we will regard it as false. Is that okay? So Kai is the lecturer of this course, although this is correct, but the sentence, this course is held on Monday and Friday, is wrong. So a correct sentence together with a wrong sentence together here, it will become wrong. Okay. So when will the conjunction be true? So, so for instance, if you change this slightly, this course is held on Monday and Wednesday. Okay. Then for this, if after the change, let's say this is now changed to Wednesday, then in this case, this becomes correct. Okay. Then in that case, the conjunction of this sentence and this sentence will be a true proposition. Is that okay? So and is the case that we will need both of them to be correct in order to make the whole thing correct. And then what about if it is wrong and wrong here? Wrong and wrong is wrong. Okay. Correct and correct is correct. Correct and wrong is still wrong. Okay. So, so the conjunction is like the multiplying operator in math. Okay. So if we consider, if we consider like, like true, we will use something. True means something that is, yeah, there, solid, help. So let's say we use the number one to represent true. And let's say we use the number zero to represent false. Okay, then the conjunction here, it looks like a multiplying operation. So one times one is one. One times zero is zero. Zero times one is zero. And zero times zero is also zero. Is that okay? So it is like a multiplying operation. Okay, now we have a third one to introduce. So this is called disjunction. So so here, conjunction is something that I want, I will explain to you when I'm teaching you. But the true idea here, you don't need to remember this word conjunction. Yeah. So you remember the word and. This is enough. Okay, and means that putting two things together, joining them together. Now we have another similar one called disjunction. So for disjunction, we also begin with two propositions P and Q. So the proposition P and Q, we, we can get the disjunction. You use the symbol this one. This is like a V. P with an arrow pointing downward. Q is the proposition P or Q. So here, the truth value of P or Q is false if both of them are false. Otherwise, we will consider it to be true. So, so if at least one of them is true, then this will be true. Okay, so for instance, let's say we have two sentences. One says, students from NTHU can take this class. Yeah, this is correct. Okay. And students from NCTU can take this class. So NCTU, the Yangming Jiao Tong. Okay. So let's say this is also true. Okay. So if I'm saying students from NTHU can this class or students from NCTU can take this, this class, we will consider this to be true. Okay, true or true is still true. Now, this is not like daily life, okay? Daily life, like, do you want coffee or tea? Perhaps you will say that you can just pick one. You can only get coffee or you can only get tea. But here, if you, like, you get coffee 
and T at the same time, this is always OK. So the OR case is not the same OR as we use daily life, but here, yeah, for logic, the OR means that if any one of them or both are true, then it is true. So how do you memorize OR? So OR, so again, you can use 1 to represent true, 0 to represent uh, false. So the OR thing is like a plus sign. So 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, and 1 plus 1 is at least 1. Okay, so in that case, yeah, true or true is becoming more true, so it is still true. Okay, so this is the logical operator OR. So we can always design a lot of different logical operators. So later we will ask you how many different logical operators can we, de can we define or can we design when we have two input propositions. But you can create any of them. What we are talking about today here are the most common logical operators that we use. So, so yeah, they should be memorized. Okay. Okay, now we have another one. So this time, this is an exclusive OR operator. So exclusive OR of two input propositions P and Q, we'll use this symbol to represent it. So this is a circle with a plus inside. It, it is defined as either P or Q, but not both. Okay. So this time, it is more like the coffee or tea case in our daily life. So, so when will this be true? Okay, so if exactly one of them is true, the other is false, then it will be true. Otherwise, it will be false. Is that okay? So here, exclusive or zero, exclusive or zero, oh, sorry, I will use, I should say false. False, exclusive or false is false. True, exclusive or true is also false. True, exclusive or false is true, and false, exclusive or true is true. Okay, so this is that simple. Okay, now, so we will talk about more logical operators next week. But here, before we go on, I want to introduce something called the truth table, which is a very good way to represent uh, the different cases that we can happen. So we can use the truth table to define what is meant by the, 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 the result of an operator. So for instance, this table here, it says that P, so in this table, we want to give the relationship between P and the negation of P. So we write down P and negation P here. And then for P, we know that for all the different cases, P can either be true or false. So we write down P, we write down T and F here to represent, oh, this represents the case that P is true, and this represents the case that P is false. So in that case, once this is defined, when P is true, then we can write down, oh, when P is true, then we know that the negation of P is false, so we can write down an F here. And similarly, when P is false, we can write down the negation of P will be true. So if you look at this table, then it is very easy to understand what is going on. We can use a truth table to define a logical operator or to understand the relationship between propositions and the with the operators. So similarly, we can so the whole thing is called a truth table. So here we have a truth table that talks about the effect of this end operator. So if we start with PQ, so these are all the possible cases that we can imagine that P and Q could be. So PQ could be true, true, could be true, false, could be false, true, could be false, false. And then once P and Q, they are, they are known. So let's say this is P is true, Q is true, then we know that P and Q will be true. So we can use this to, to, to define uh, what is the meaning of, of this end operator. So as an exercise, yeah, yeah, please go home yeah, and, then, yeah, and then do this, P or Q, and then P exclusive or Q. Ah, sorry, I have... Ah, excuse me, let me answer a phone call. I'm really sorry about this. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, so let me get back. Okay, but we are really uh, at, at the end of, of this class. So, okay, so this is all what I want to talk about today. 
And then in the OZW recording, so we have asked a couple of logical puzzles. Yeah, we will talk about this uh, on Monday in the tutorial. Yeah, yeah. Go home and then and then watch the video if you haven't. And then yeah, and then leave us any message here, uh, uh, if you want. Okay, so that's all for today. And uh, thank you for coming. Yes. Okay. Bye bye. Ah, so someone has asked a question. Yeah. So so let's see. Uh, okay, so next week's course will be about lecture one. Okay, so 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 you, you can uh, so 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 this is how we are going to do. Okay, Wednesday class is a class summary, and the Monday immediately after that will also be the same topic, but then we will give exercises and tutorials. Okay, so you are welcome to join. Yeah, and then ask us questions. So, okay, so. So that's all. Okay, thanks a lot for coming, and then and then leave us message. So we will. Ah, let oh bye 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 bye. Thanks a lot. Okay, and then uh, leave us questions. Yeah, so we will collect questions until until Saturday. Okay, thank you very much. Bye 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 bye. Yeah, I'm really happy to see all your of you here. Yeah, thanks. Okay, I also go out now. Okay, bye bye.